Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the bench. In today's video, I'm going to talk about quality LED components. At least ones that I have experience with, and I think they're a fine product. Now, if you're like me, you probably purchased these LED packs off of eBay. You can get them, you know, they come in this nice case, or you can get them where they come in the uh, little anti-static bags. I've been trying them out for years and uh, never been satisfied with them. The big problem is, especially with the blue ones and the white ones, you know, they might be rated at 20 milliamps current. Even running them under spec, such as 15 milliamps, I noticed after a fairly short time, you know, continuous use after about a week, they get dim they start fading and another issue is colors like uh, yellow and red they're not as bright as they could be you might hook them up and they seem bright but when you compare them to a quality LED you'll see just how much brighter the good ones are so let's get on taking a look at LEDs first we'll look at these three millimeter and five millimeter types these are quite popular and handy. They're a through hole component. They call it that because they have leads and they go through holes on a circuit board. In other words, they're not surface mount. So they're easy for a do-it-yourselfer to use. And good quality ones are pretty bright and very long lasting. So we'll start with the little three millimeter ones here. These are made by a company called Optech. You can get them at DigiKey, probably Mauser. I'm not sure about Mauser. I bought these from DigiKey. One thing you notice is they're not going to be as cheap as these for obvious reasons. You know, these 150 pieces for, I think I paid 4 or $5. You can probably buy 20 of them for that. But you're really getting a far better product that's going to last for thousands of hours and be brighter. So we'll power some of these up and uh, do a quick comparison. See how bright they are. So I plugged a couple into the socket board in a series so the current through them will be the same. And if you're familiar with LEDs you have to limit current using a device such as a resistor. And if I remember correctly these LEDs are rated for 20 milliamps so we'll turn them on here and pointing them at the camera they do seem quite bright but let me point them at something else well, here is the Chinese one and here is the Optech one they have about the same beam angle but the uh, Optech one is just annihilating it in brightness so you can there you can see it a little better there so right there that's one reason you would want to buy a high quality LED now here is a comparison of the blue I really can't properly compare this you can see the Optech has a big wide angle of light and the Chinese one is more focused, so it does seem brighter. In actuality, they are similar in brightness. But again, like I said earlier, the problem is with the Chinese one, in about a week, this one will get dim. Whereas the Optech, it'll last for a few thousand hours. These Optech LEDs come in five different colors. I just have four here. They come in red, green, blue, amber, and white. One thing about the 3 millimeter LEDs, they tend to have a wider beam because of their smaller size. They can't focus light as well as a 5 millimeter LED. But they are very small and can fit into tighter spaces. And again, being through hole type components with leads, they're a lot easier for the do-it-yourselfer to use. The next type of LED is the very common 5 millimeter type. The larger size means they can make the lens focus the light 
to a narrow beam such as 15 degrees or a wide beam such as 55 degrees or more. Of course you can get them in various colors including warm or cool white. And here I have a Cree 5mm LED hooked up. It's a neutral white light, actually, a very nice light color. And it's around 30 degree beam, I believe. And as you can see, it throws off a fairly nice bright beam for being such a small LED. Both Cree and Optech make very nice LEDs. I'm sure there's others. But, um, you know, Cree and Optech are the ones that I'm most familiar with. The next LED up is a very tiny one. In fact, I set it here right next to the 5mm one for perspective. And as you can see, this thing is barely larger than a pencil point. It's a surface mount type LED made by Cree. It's 2.7 by 2 millimeters in size. It is very tiny to be sure. I put one in my hand here. The camera needs a, a close-up background for the macro to work, so there it is. I turn it over there. There's the contacts. It's just a tiny little white LED. And to be able to demonstrate it, I soldered leads onto one of them. And we'll take a look at it. Okay, I've connected it to the little board here, and you can see it puts out quite a bit of light for its diminutive size. And like the 3 and 5 millimeter LEDs, this particular one is rated at 25 milliamps. And I did test one of these. I bought these a few years ago. And I let them run for three years straight at 30 milliamps. And they did not dim at all. Just incredible quality of these. As you can see here, they come in a ammo type packaging. They are very difficult to work with because of their size. Normally meant for surface mount using solder paste. The next tiny surface mount LED I have to show you here is the 3x3 three three millimeter Cree comes in a 600 milliwatt or a 1 watt version. The 1 watt version, at least at the time when I bought them about a year ago, was the most efficient LEDs I've seen. They are available in bins up to 186 lumens per watt. The ones I found in the wild at DigiKey were 175 lumens per watt. Of course, the efficiency is going to depend on the color temperature and the CRI. You know, you're not going to get the highest CRI, but you know, it's not bad. I think they were rated 70 CRI at 6,000 Kelvin for that efficiency. So that is a extremely efficient little LED there. Here is a close-up of it. You see that little dot there? That's a protection diode. It helps protect these from static electricity since they are static sensitive. All white LEDs are. I'm trying to flip it over. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Here is the bottom side. You can see the contact area. The larger contact being for heat sinking. Again, it is a high powered LED. Uh, you know, for its size and it needs to get rid of that heat. Just like before, I had to solder on some leads so I can hook it up to my little board here to demonstrate it. And here it is plugged into the board. See, it gives off quite a bit of light for its tiny little size. And like I say, it is pretty efficient. The next LED, and perhaps my personal favorite, are these little chip-on-board style ones. This is the Cree CXA 1304. It's a 4 watt LED. Like I say, it's a COB, C -O -B, which means chip on board style. The CXA and CXB series come in various power ratings and sizes. You know, like I say, this is 4 watt. They have them all the way up to 150 watts. And that's a lot 
of lumens. So, you know, 150 watts of LED light is going to be a lot of lumens. Now, the reason I like these little CXA 1304s is because they're very inexpensive. Uh, they can make a lot of light and they come in a 9 volt version. Most companies do not make such a low voltage version of these. And I should mention when you buy these you have to watch the voltage rating because this same style comes in a 9, 18, and 36 volts. So you have to choose the correct voltage. You can get them in various color temperatures of white, you know, from warm white to cool white and neutral white. They come in uh, various efficiency bins and a color rendering index. You can get them from a CRI of 70 up to 95. Of course, the higher CRI ones will be are going to be a little more expensive. You know, this one here I got for a buck 20. You can get it for under a dollar 20 now. For a very high quality LED, you can get it so cheaply. And why monkey with that Chinese garbage? Having that 9 volt version available really opens the doors for battery use, automotive use. You can use them with 12 volts just using a dropping resistor. I use them from anywhere from 75 milliamps up to 400 milliamps. For the 9 volt version, that's the main current range. You can actually uh, push them up to 1 amp or so. They're spec to do that, but if you're going to push them that hard, it's better to step up to the next level. But unfortunately, like I say, the 1304 is the only 9 volt version around. Here is a close up of it. Let me flip that over for you. And it's just a ceramic type package. You know, nothing on the back. The contacts are going to be on the front there. I have this little demonstration set up here to show you these LEDs. Just using a little pickaxe microcontroller. Three of its outputs come to this Darlington transistor array to boost the output current so I can drive these LEDs. A uh, 5 volt regulator for the microcontroller and I'm driving the uh, array here with 12 volts and there's these 22 ohm dropping resistors I'm using. And I have a warm white, neutral white, and cool white. This is a, I think this is a, either a 2700 Kelvin or a 3000 Kelvin, I don't recall. This is a 4000 Kelvin and a 5000 Kelvin. And let me turn on the power supply. It's going to blow the camera out here. Turns them all on and then it just sequences slowly through them. But I'm not really driving them that hard. Uh, power supply says it's uh, 120 milliamps. So I'm not really driving them that hard, but they really light it up. And uh, the neutral white one just switched on. I should lock the white balance of the camera because it's going to compensate. But uh, you kind of see what's going on there. Again, my favorite LED. I put some in my the dome lights of my vehicles. I made a lantern out of one. I have one in my front porch light. I plan to use them for solar applications. They just have a nearly endless potential. I just love these things. I don't mean to sound like a Cree fanboy, but they do have a lot of nice products, a wide varied selection of good LEDs that you can find use for in, in various situations. But there are other great players out there, and this time it's a Bridge Lux. This here is a Vero type, I believe they call them. It's a 25 volt, 350 milliamps typical or up to 700 milliamps maximum. This particular one is a uh, 4000 Kelvin. 
and let's see if I can get a focus on that number there. It's a 40E 1000D7. And again, it's a Bridge Lux brand. Like Cree, they have a bunch of different type chip on board LEDs in various styles. There's the back of it with the uh, little heat sink pad. Nice thing about these LEDs, they have little notches for screw mounting. And up here they have a mini connector. So you don't have to solder them, you can actually buy a little connector and just plug them right in. But if you want, they still have the solder pads if you want to solder them up. If I didn't mention, this one goes up to around 1300 lumens. So it's a pretty bright little LED. Okay, I have it powered up at very low current. It's not even registering on the power supply. It's probably a couple milliamps. But look at all the little dye in there, the actual LED dye. See how large they are? And they all light up even at very low current. Compare that to the junk you find on eBay. They have tiny little dye inside and they don't light up evenly. And these are nice big dye. They're going to handle the current and light up and be very efficient. Okay, I'm going to crank up the current here. And I'll stop at 70 milliamps. Well, I'm not making a very good connection. These gator clips are kind of a pain. There we go. That is very bright. That's making a lot of light. At 70 milliamps. Can't push it because of the heat sink. And it's starting to get pretty warm. I better back it down. Excellent. Beautiful 4000 Kelvin light. Gorgeous light. You know, there's literally thousands upon thousands of different LED components out there. Many that are excellent quality would work just fine in your application. But from the small sampling that I examine, I mean, I'm just one person. I can only buy so much and review it. But, you know, to me, this is the cream of the crop. Excellent products. Everything I have here lasts a long time. You know, this, this Bridge Lux is fairly new to me, but I have used their products in the past, several years ago, and, you know, they lasted without any issues whatsoever. So I have no doubt this would be a long-lasting product, as, you know, as much as the rest of the stuff here. So if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you know, making uh, solar-powered lighting projects, automotive camping, whatever, I just strongly encourage using high-quality LEDs instead of monkeying with that cheap junk from China. Well, I'm getting a low battery signal on the camera, so i got to wrap this up now. Thanks again for watching my videos. Boom, boom, out go the lights. If this camera would just focus, it would be a miracle.